Welcome back everyone. Garlan here bringing you another Neverwinter video. Today we're going to be jumping into the Mod 13 single target build-in guide for the Soulbinder Warlock. Now I normally get a lot of questions asking, uh, you know, what is the difference between Soulbinder versus Hellbringer for single target in particular? Now we do know that Hellbringer is the best for AoE situations. However, when you're playing Soulbinder versus Hellbringer for single target, there is one thing you need to keep in mind. If you're going to have a boss battle that lasts two minutes, three minutes, or more, you should probably be using the Soulbinder loadout. Simply put, the Soulbinder takes a lot of time to ramp up and really hit its potential numbers, Whereas Hellbringer can be a little more bursty. Uh, so if you're in a melt group in either Tomb of the Nine or Cradle. And you're you know absolutely melting the boss or the content. Then you should probably run Hellbringer. Just so you can burst as much as you can. Whereas like I said the Soul Binder uh, takes a little bit to ramp up. So without further ado we will jump right into it. As always full disclaimer. This build is what I'm currently using. You can feel free to edit or tinker it to your needs. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, let's go ahead and start with the attributes, which have been the same throughout time. We're going to go with Constitution and Charisma. You want to roll as high as Constitution as you can possibly get. We are still running a human. It is still best in slot. Uh, only by a few percent. However, if you want to min-max, uh, human is your best option. Uh, you can go with Dragonborn or Tefling. That is completely up to you. But we are still running human as it is best in slot. As far as the gear goes, uh, there are going to be a little uh, differences here from previous mods. We do have some new items. Uh, for the helmet, we are still using the Rex Corona. For your chest plate, now this is personal preference, I'm using the Vivified Primal, however you can use the Masterwork 3 or the Rex uh, as well, that's completely up to you. Now coming in Mod 13, we have the Eye Stalk Wrappers, you're going to want to pick these up for the ranged power DPS. And finally for your boots, I'm using the Primal, uh, however you can swap these out for the Enduring boots, uh, especially in Cradle. Specifically talking about Cradle, you're not going to be using your stamina, so when your stamina is full, you're gaining 3% more damage increase. Uh, Tomb of the Nine's a little different. You might be shadow slippering around a little bit. It's all personal preference, guys. If you don't think or you can manage your stamina, then you might want to pick up the Enduring boots. As far as our weapon set, for single target, we are going with the Primal set, uh, both Exalted, of course. For your three-piece set, unfortunately, uh, there haven't been any updates for DPS. We are still using the Demogorgon set, or the Baphomet set, or the Orca set, whatever you want to call it. So that's going to be your necklace, your belt, and then your artifact. Now as far as your rings go... Uh, you know, there are many options for rings. However, as far as best in slot goes, we're going to come down here. Uh, Ring of Offensive Action. Uh, it's currently still bugged or glitch. When, you're, when you use a daily power, your damage is increased by 3%. Well, when you use Brood of Hadar, it keeps auto-refreshing as long as you have Brood and Act. So, best in slot most likely but it's it is broken right now whether or not they're ever going to fix it that's who knows for your second ring you probably want to try to get at least a plus five shadow stalker for your powers deal 2.5 percent more damage when you are close you're going to be close regardless whether you're playing a hellbringer or soulbinder you're going to be close to the boss if you can get a plus four version of this it's going to have a slightly less value and slightly less statistics, but it's still going to outweigh most other rings. And 
and then for your shirt and pants I choose to use the upper and lower primal however you can use you know basically whatever you want here if you don't like the upper primal because it doesn't have raw power on it you can go back to the pristine uh, which has like 200 power on it are you really going to make a big deal about 200 power? Mm, probably not, but I mean, that's up to you. The main reason that you want to use the upper primal is for the daily powers, you know. Your daily powers do 3% more damage, so do you really want to risk, uh, you know, worrying about raw statistical power over an effect? Absolutely not. The upper primal is definitely going to be best in slot. The lower primal, eh, the effect doesn't really matter. For your artifacts, I currently use the Soul Sight Crystal for the humongous boost in DPS it gives you for 10 seconds. Uh, you can still use a you know DC sigil here if you want to double cast your Brood of Hadar. That's completely up to you. I like the burst DPS that this brings for 10 seconds, especially uh, if you can coordinate all the buffs together. It's going to do pretty well. Your other two artifacts don't really matter. You need to balance your own statistics, as I've been saying throughout time. Uh, I choose to use the Eye of the Giant for, you know, split stats, as well as the Sigil of the Controller for the Power Crit. That's what I personally need for my statistics. And the same thing with your offensive enchantments. That's going to be completely up to you. I'm still running four Demonics, and then I stack Radiance and everything else. As far as your armor enchantment goes i use the bark shield however you know if you still are attached to the negation uh, or the soul forge that's completely up to you it's personal preference for the weapon enchantment we're still going to be going with the fey uh definitely best in slot the fey can't really be uh beaten right now especially on the warlock just the damage combination and everything it's just it's it's too good to pass up, guys. If you want to use a Vorpal, if you want to use a Dread, be my guest. But the Fey is going to outperform both of them. As far as your reinforcements, you can stack whatever statistics you need. So, for instance, I go with Power. Uh, however, if you need Crit or Armor Pen, you can feel free to put those on your left side gear. And then, as always, on the right, the right side gear, I always go Action Point Gain. That's going to wrap it up for the gear. If you have any specific questions on the gear or why I use something specific or, you know, if you're using something different, feel free to leave me a comment below. So next on the list, we're going to jump right into the build itself. Now you're going to notice something, you know, a little, a little off here and I will explain uh, the decision making that I have behind this specifically. So, as I said, we are playing a human. We're going to gain three additional feats. Uh, we're going to have one point in AP gain, three points in crit. Now, if you're over capping on your crit, you don't have to put the three points here, and you can put three points into AP. That's completely up to you. We're going to take three out of three for toughness, so we can coincide with Aura of Courage. We're going to take three out of three for him Empowered Rituals for the encounter power damage. We're going to take five points in determined casting to lower our cooldowns. And then again, like I said, we are playing human. We get those three extra feats. You want to build as much constitution as you can so you get the bonus damage. And you want to take five out of five in blood pack. Now here is the difference here. So instead of taking devastating critical, which is going to give you 15% crit severity, you can make up crit severity elsewhere, or you don't even have to worry about crit severity. As long as you're hitting 100%, 105%, even 110%, you're going to be fine. But as time has progressed, we're not worrying about crit severity. The percentile raw damage numbers are going to outweigh the crit severity numbers. Now, I'm taking 3 out of 3 for Scorn for Curse, and there's a specific reason why. Uh, it increases the damage dealt by Lesser Curse and Deadly Curse by 30%. Uh, we're focusing on Deadly Curse in particular. Now, I'll explain a little more in depth when we go into the power section, but just keep that in mind that we are taking Scornful Curse 3 out of 3. Now the build itself, we're going to come up here and take Critical Promise. Uh, after a critical hit, your next hit will do 40% weapon damage. This scales with buff buffs now, so it's decent. You might want to pick it up. 
Five out of five for Burning Soul. Your Soul Sparks now also increase your damage by 0.3% per Soul Spark. As long as you have Soul Sparks active, you're going to gain raw percentile damage. You're going to be burning through your Sparks really quick, so most of the time this doesn't even factor. Uh, unless you're just timing everything 100% perfectly and you can have five Soul Sparks up and then you pop a Killing Flames. That's the only bonus damage you're going to get from this, really. Now, we're taking 5 out of 5 for Hell Touch. It's not a big deal, but if something does hit you, uh, then you're going to get 10% increased damage on that mob. Doesn't happen very often, unfortunately, but in an AoE, like if the boss AoEs you, that does count, so we take it. 5 out of 5 for Internal Wrath. Your Lesser Curse also uh, does a 5% debuff on the boss. So, you're going to have Lesser Curse up most of the time. So, why not take this? 5 out of 5 for Executioners. 15% bonus damage uh, when the target's health diminishes for at-wills and encounters. 5 out of 5 for Killing Curse. Now, we never used to take this because it used to be complete butt cheeks. However, now it does scale with buffs. Uh, so, it's, it's decent. You know, depending on how well of a group you've put together and how good the buffs are this does actually do you know some dps five out of five for murderous flames one of the biggest controversial feats that the warlocks have i still continue to take it i still like it however if you don't like it you can take the five points out come down here put them into parting blasphemy uh parting blasphemy also now now scales with buffs so whenever a curse is removed you're going to deal 50% of weapon damage. Like I said, it scales now with buffs, so you do get a significant increase in DPS from Parting Blasphemy. Uh, now, I've played with both ways. Like I said, I still prefer uh, Murderous Flames. However, personal preference, it's up to you. Lastly, we're taking 5 out of 5 for Brutal Curse. Uh, you know, your Warlock's Curse is going to be an additional debuff. Uh, by 10% it's you know self-explanatory and it really goes with this build and rotation for the power as well especially with the scornful curse and everything else we have and I will explain that a little further uh, when we get to the powers finally creeping death we all know what creeping death is by now you should be golden so this is the build feel free to use it feel free to tinker with it and you know if you don't like something switch it around let me know how it goes for you Next on the list, we're going to talk about the companions. We're not going to go through the boons. If you want to see the boons, which haven't changed at all um, in the past several mods, you can go back and watch any previous video that the boons are listed or even navigate over to the Mod 13 Hellbringer video. I think I have the boons in there. It's also timestamped in the description as well as this video will be timestamped so you can skip right to the boons. But to save time on the video, we're not going to go over the boons uh, in this particular video. Now, as far as companions go, uh, your summon companion, we're going to use the Shulton Tiger. However, you can still continue to use your Con Artist, Cell Sword, or Rebel Mercenary. However, best in slot is going to be the Shulton Tiger just for the additional DPS it's going to provide for 25 seconds. Uh, of course, you want to have your Bonding Stones times 3, all to rank 14. Now, as far as ring goes, uh, you would ideally like to have a shadow plus five and a shadow plus four. However, if you're not able to get those, uh, the bronze wood raids work out well, or you can use the bronze wood restoration instead of the raid. That's completely up to the statistics that you want to push for. I like to use the raid rings for the power crit. And then also I have the illusionist gambit necklace, which is going to be crit and armor pen. Now the necklace... Whatever necklace you can get from Illusionist is going to be up to you. Keep in mind in Mod 14, uh, these are going to be dropping out of a lockbox. So keep that in mind. Don't go out there and farm Illusionist if you don't want to. If you have ADs stored away, be prepared to pay a pretty penny for either a plus 4 or a plus 5. Uh, the plus fives are being changed to double offensive slots. The overload slot is finally getting removed. No one really knows why it was there in the first place. As far as your actives, we are going with the Siege Master. However, this can be substituted for basically anything you want. Uh, the Alpha Compy, uh, the Velociraptor, whatever the hell that is, the Tamed Velociraptor, if everyone is running that. You know, there's, there's different 
companions that can be run here if you so choose. However, I'm still going with the Siege Master. Now we're only going to double Arcan bonus here. So the Archon bonus, we are going to go with the Air Archon and the Earth Archon. Uh, you can substitute the Earth for a Fire, but just keep in mind, you know, you got to wait until the 50% threshold before it kicks in. I like the constant increase over um, the 50% threshold. Finally, we are using the Wild Hunt Rider. Uh, you know, there's some Warlocks out there that want to spit you bad information, uh, I'm not going to argue in this video. If you want to use the Wild Hunt Rider, uh, it still works right now. It was unnerfed. Uh, you have to use the right rotation to activate it properly. Uh, so these other Warlocks out there are providing information with testing that's saying that it's not working properly. However, they're not using the correct rotation on it. We'll get into the rotation when I get to the power section. So Wild Hunt Rider, if you don't want to use it, fine. If you don't have one already leveled up from previous uh, modules in the game when it was, you know, super OP, I wouldn't go out there and buy one right now because it eventually is going to probably get re-nerfed. Like, it was obviously a mistake when they unnerfed it. So, it is working right now. It's filming of this video. It's worked since Mod 12. Uh, if it gets changed in Mod 14, we'll have to wait and see. That's going to wrap it up for the companions. We'll move over to the mounts next. Alright, let's get this short and sweet here, boys. Single target. Tenzer's Transformation, which will be changing in Mod 14. But up until this point, Mod 13, single target. Tenzer's Transformation. You're going to be a greedy SOB when it comes to DPS. You want the self buff from Tenzer's. Now, if you want to be a nice guy and use a T-Rex, that's completely up to you. But if you want solid single target dps then you want to use tensors followed by 4000 power as far as your stable goes protectors camaraderie calvary's warning artificers persuasion assassin's covenant shepherd's devotion this is if you want to be that team player again now if you want to be greedy you can sacrifice shepherd's devotion for magistrate's patience which all these mount bonuses are very, very small. I really wish the mount system would get an upgrade and give us some more uh, effects or better effects. However, Magistrate Patience is going to be DPS. That's completely up to you if you want to boost your numbers even more. If you want to be more of a team player, Shepherd's Devotion it is. Of course, we're using all Epic Insignias, and then you need to balance your own statistics. Uh, I use Dominance for the Power, Aggression for the Armor Pen, and Skill for the Crit Strike. And this is just all bonus stats here. So Epic Insignias give 200 to each stat. You can gain a good bit of statistics uh, just from your Insignias. That's going to wrap it up for the mounts. We're going to jump right into the powers and rotations and wrap up the video. Alright, let's go over the powers and we'll do some rotations and then we'll finish off the video, guys. So for your at wills, uh, we're using Eldritch Blast as our secondary. However, you can use whatever you want. If you want to use Dark Spiral, be my guest. Uh, for your main, you're going to use Essence the Fowler, which is going to be on your primary weapon as well to increase its damage. However, its damage is just insignificant. This is your Soul Spark generator. It's one way to generate your Soul Sparks. Now for the encounters, we're going to use Hador's Grasp, Soul Scorch, and Killing Flames. For your dailies, Brood of Hador, and basically whatever else you want. It doesn't really matter for the secondary. You're only going to be using Brood of Hador for single target. Uh, if you want to use your little uh, army, that's completely up to you. Your Immolation Spirits, mmm... This is going to be a little iffy because this doesn't work with the Soul Sight Crystal. Uh, it will generate you sparks, however, not the best idea. Now, the personals, this is why we're taking Scornful Kirch. Uh, Deadly Curse. When your Warlock's Curse deals damage when applied to targets not affected by it, you do damage. Your Warlock's Curse deals damage when you cast it on something that doesn't have it. Scornful Curse increases the damage of Warlock's Curse and Deadly Curse. Now, a lot of Warlocks don't know, 
for whatever reason, this is scaling with buffs as well. I've seen my deadly curse, personally, hit for 800k. So, if you think about the rotation for Soulbinder, you're constantly casting Warlock's Curse, your Warlock's Curse is being taken away from something else, and you're recasting Warlock's Curse again. Deadly Curse is going to hit every single time you do that throughout your rotation. That's why this is such a big deal. Like I said, in a buff group, I've seen my Deadly Curse hit for 600k, 700k, 800k. That's a lot of damage when you're recasting your Warlock's Curse every 3 seconds. So... You'll see it more in action during rotations. You're unfortunately not going to see the high numbers because I'm not in a buff group right now. But you'll you'll see in the rotation what I mean by you, you know, refreshing Warlock's Curse all the time. Now, secondary to that is going to be up to you. Uh, we use Dust to Dust, which is going to be used on our offhand uh, as well for the bonus. However, I mean, you can practically use anything else you want. If you want to still use ACC... Uh, and ACC on your offhand, that's completely up to you. I choose to use Dust to Dust and then the offhand bonus for Dust to Dust. So that's going to wrap up the powers. Let's go ahead and I'll show you guys a normal rotation. Now, I'll show you a couple uh, rotations uh, and I'll explain it throughout. So, single target DPS Soulbinder. You're going to immediately start with Warlock's Curse, right? So you have Warlock's Curse. You can clearly see that my damage is a fixed number at 5,000. Now my pet is proccing. So now that's increased to 9,000. That clearly proves Deadly Curse is being enhanced by buffs. Uh, it was 5,000 before my companion started attacking when my companion started attacking and my bondings proc that base number went up now i'm hitting for uh what was that 20k 9k it just crit for 20k right there it also crits by the way so that's what i mean that's what you can see that dumb that damage coming from so i'm critting for 20k on that now imagine that being in a buff group like i said those numbers are there i've i've hit for 600 700 800k it's been streamed live uh, people have seen this already so anyway that's one part of it so you're going to start your rotation warlock curse you're going to immediately hit your hadar's grass which is going to take that curse away so you're going to curse again and do that additional damage right now, we're using Hadar's Grasp as the starting thing because that's going to proc your Wild Hunt and Rider as well. That's one of the key factors in proccing your Wild Hunt and Rider. So we go over here, Warlock's Curse, Hadar's Grasp, Warlock's Curse again. So now you have all that tick damage going, right? Now we're, jaining, we're gaining Soul Sparks at the same time. So once you gain your Soul Sparks, remember Warlock's Curse. Refresh your Hadars, Warlock's Curse again. Now the same philosophy goes with your Soul Scorch, right? So you're casting a Soul Scorch, Warlock's Curse disappears. Warlock's Curse again, Soul Scorch. Again, Warlock's Curse. Soul Scorch, Warlock's Curse. <laughs> Soul Scorch, Warlock's Curse. You guys can see the damage potential here from that rotation. Every time you remove your Warlock's Curse, you need to reapply it. But you're going to do damage every time you reapply it. So let me show you a full rotation for single target. When I start, I typically will come in here. I'll Curse. I'll hit my Mount Power. I'll hit my Hadar's Grasp. Warlock's Curse again. My Soul Sight's Crystal. Start spamming some Sparks. Throw some At Wills in there. Remember to reapply your Warlock's Curse in between every single Soul Scorch. My Hadar's is up again. Warlock's again. Soul Scorch. Warlock's Curse. Soul Scorch. Warlock's Curse. And if you can find the downtime to actually get a Killing Flames in there as well. Now, I forgot to hit my uh, Daily. But you'll want to hit your Daily right after you pop your Soul Sight Crystal. You can do... Uh, 
any rotation you want on Hellbringer single target. On Soulbinder single target, it's a set rotation. You have to learn it. You have to get the timing right. And you have to do it accordingly. There's not much you can substitute in here um, for hitting those high DPS numbers. Now, if you want to not use Killing Flames at all and use Fiery Bolt or something else, uh, that's completely up to you. Even if you want to put Warlock's Bargain in there or something that removes the curse so you're activating curse again, that's completely up to you. But I like using Killing Flames because, you know, when the boss hits 50% or less, that's when Killing Flames really shines. So let's go ahead and do one more solid rotation here. We're going to start off Curse, Mount Power, Hadors, Curse, Soul Sight, Daily, Curse again to make sure. Hit some at wills in there, gain sparks. Soul Scorch, Warlock's Curse. Soul Scorch, Warlock's Curse etc. Hadors is back up. Recurse. Killing Flames if you want to throw it in there. Curse again. Soul Scorch. Curse again. Soul Scorch. You guys get the picture. That's going to wrap it up for the powers and rotation, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video overall. I know I tried to keep this video short, but it is a build and a guide video. Those videos do tend to be a little longer. Uh, wrapping up in the conclusion, thank you for the overwhelming support over the couple past years. Um, we streamed this build live the other day. And in Cradle, as playing DPS, I was doing anywhere from 420 to 450 million. Uh, I was barely getting beaten DPS by the Great Weapon Fighter. However, the Hunter Ranger was destroying me. Uh, he was at like 700 million. The Great Weapon Fighter was at like 455 million. And uh, me on DPS as a Warlock was at like 430 million that run. So we were almost in the ballpark of the Great Weapon Fighter. The Hunter Ranger still was destroying us. Uh, the Guardian Fighter that we had in that group was unfortunately undergeared, so we couldn't really compare. Uh, but yes, you can play DPS in Cradle, you can play DPS in Tomb, however, you should still be playing Temptation. Temptation is going to help the raid, it's going to help the group. I know it, it hurts me to say that, but that's the way it is, that's the meta, that's what Cryptic has made the Warlock. They gave them a debuff on the capstone for Temptation. 20% debuff is going to outweigh any amount of DPS you can do. So, yes, you guys, unfortunately, everybody should be playing Temptation. However, if you want to play DPS, I've now provided Mod 13 Hellbringer AoE in single target. And now Soulbinder single target. Thank you guys for watching. If you do have a comment or concern, feel free to leave it below. And I will see you guys in the next video.